Because that would just be weird, sitting in bars with cake. I mean, who would do that? Why would anyone do that? Why, for cake, 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 cake. Sitting in bars with cake is an Amazon original that comes to us from the director of Step Up All In and Pitch Perfect 3. And this comes to us from writer Audrey Shulman, who's done some Hallmark romance and also wrote a little cookbook a few years ago called Sane and Bars with Cake. So you want to talk about very accurate source material, not just in the title, but in the actual source material right there. Bam! Perfect. Easy to figure out. So this centers around an actual time in Audrey's life where she had a best friend, Chrissy. Chrissy was very outgoing, Audrey, not less so, but Chrissy's like encouraging her, please go find a boyfriend. You're really good at making cake. You want to do something else with your life, so you're really, really good. Let's take a cake. Let's go to a bar. You can meet a boy. And they have other friends with them, and they do all this stuff. And then, unfortunately, a certain thing happens that really, it doesn't fracture their friendship, but it really fractures their lives because... It's about watching someone you love struggle with something and knowing that you can't do anything about it. Wanting to pursue your dreams but also be there for your friends. And it's endearing and it's also really... It's really sad, guys. It's really sad. It's really sad. I'm going to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. But if you read the description, if you, you know, picked up on the particular, you know, any of the little details you could pick out of that description, you probably can figure out where this is going. But some of the names were changed to protect the innocent. So you have Yaya Shahdi, who plays Jane, baking cakes all over. She was uh, Tinkerbell and Peter Pan and Wendy. Uh, she was featured much better here. And then you have Corinne, who's uh, played by Odessa Azion, who was Riley in Hellraiser. And then you have Adina Porter, who is terrific in American Horror Story. <laughs> And then you have Ron Livingston, I presume. <laughs> yeah, Bette Midler. Yeah, Bette Midler's in this. And also um, Martha Kelly. And Ron Livingston and Martha, they play the parents of Corinne. And one thing, I, before I really describe anything else about the movie, I will say the soundtrack is on the goddamn money. Great, great music here. It's well shot. It's very well shot. It takes its time <coughs> showing how somebody would appreciate, you know, a uh, fine cake and how somebody would appreciate a woman's cake and everything. And there's a bunch of euphemisms you can take out of that. But, yeah, she does a really good job conveying um, Jane's willingness to try some new things but also being very reserved because of wanting to help out her friend Corinne. And Corinne's like, no, no, we need to go do this. We need to get out and do this stuff. I've got... This stuff, but I want to see you succeed. I want to do all this stuff. And she's very boisterous. They're, they're two polar opposites because we make it any more obvious. And then about 30 minutes in, <coughs> takes a sudden turn. And then the movie bops from being endearing. Incredibly sad. But we'll give a fair warning to everybody here. It, it, it She gets a brain tumor. She gets a brain tumor right there. Anybody that has dealt with a family member or a close friend that Sorry, that has cancer um, and goes through it, I would advise use caution watching this. I would really advise it, especially if it's fairly you know, new in your mind. This could trigger a lot of stuff. It does show the power of friendship and how parents would be there and how some, you know, everybody deals with an illness differently. And it's just, it's incredibly sad. It's well acted. It's very well acted. Uh, Yaya and Odessa are obviously the two standouts here. But everybody else plays their role as well. Um, and there are other characters. You know I mean? It, it's, is it the most wholly original movie as far as how it's laid out? Not necessarily, but you can tell that Audrey put a lot of her personal attention into this because of her life experiences. And I can only imagine how somebody would have felt going through that. I will tell you a quick story here before I get into spoilers. I lost my grandma back when I was nine, nine or ten. Um, it's been a number of years. I was very young and I remember she lived, her and my grandpa lived five miles from us when this town was a lot less developed. But nevertheless, 
I remember, you know, always having fun. You know, you you think you think, yeah, your grandparents are old, but they're gonna be around for a bit, and then you lose them. And I mean, it it was just really sad because she had cancer, um, breast cancer, I believe, and it spread. And it was really sad seeing her. And I I don't have many memories, but I do have an, I do have I have good memories, and I also have memories of her being not in the best condition and crying at the funeral. So yeah, yeah, if you got anybody that's a family member or a close friend and they're going through illnesses, please be there for them because they'd be there for you. That's the one message about this. You would drop everything. You would do what you can for somebody that, that is a true friend and a true soulmate, you know, without getting into the romance aspect of it, just a true somebody that truly is bonded with you. <laughs> I didn't think this was going to be so hard, guys. So anyway, um, the movie itself actually has some great endearment as far as the soundtrack, as far as the chemistry between Yaya and Odessa, and even the parents play well. Uh, Ron Livingston plays kind of a, a bit of a over, not overbearing, but just overly ready Mr. Fix-It type, and <coughs> Martha Kelly plays the mother that cares. I mean, and they care, not even a little bit too much, but... Um, Corinne wants to, you know, live her life. She doesn't want to be a burden to her parents, but then unfortunately things get a little bit worse. And... Yeah. Yeah. It's really good, but just be very careful if you have lost anybody to that. Because it's, um, yeah, you could argue it's a little heavy, it maybe a little heavy handed, but the performances make it, the writing makes it, and you can tell a lot of love and appreciation was put into this by Audrey. So I'm very sorry she had to go through that and that her friend had to go through that, but this is very well done, very well done. It's uh, on Amazon. If you have an Amazon membership, you know, you pay for <coughs> Amazon Prime, you get free movies like this. So you can be endeared and then you can be really depressed by the end. Hooray! This is one of the better films of the year. God damn it! Grinder in this, sorry. But it is one of the better films of the year. It would, it's really close, actually. It's really close. This, yeah, there are some issues. Um, some of it, some of the characters, and maybe, maybe all these characters actually were ones that interacted in, you know, their lives during this whole time period. And there's a map set up with all the cakes, <laughs> where the cakes are going to go, and how guys are kind of dicks about this thing in a literal sense when it comes to one of them but then it's about jane about jane growing up and about corinne yeah yeah it's, it's sad but it's good it's really good i'm gonna get into spoilers it's on amazon if you want to check it out but yeah great performances good soundtrack good atmosphere well done very sad but uplifting kind of maybe especially since it's based on a true story Anyway, three, two, one, and spoilers. So, yeah, um, Corinne dies. That doesn't really surprise anybody because, unfortunately, it was a an aggressive type of uncurable brain cancer. <laughs> there are certain people that I've talked to throughout my life I know that have dealt with way harsher things than I have, and just nobody should have to see a family member go through that. And... Odessa does a really good job at first, it, <coughs> joking around, all that stuff and everything. But, you know, even joking about wearing her cancer mask, which kind of almost looks like a fencing mask. Uh, Corinne's parents come along and they want to help her, but then they leave and Jane actually puts a lot of her life on hold. Corinne got a promotion because of her boss, Bette Midler, but then she starts having memory issues because of where the tumor is. And there was a funny line between, yeah, yeah, I know Odessa... Only you would want to keep your cancer mask. I mean, that's that that's kind of funny. It really did look like a fancy mask, though. Um, and then there are various others. And then there's this uh, <coughs> little subplot with a guy named Owen, played by Rich Shaw, who is a co-worker, and him and Jane kind of hook up for a little bit. Uh, Corinne is insistent because she keeps working through her treatments on paying her share. And Jane's like, no, don't worry. It's all right. You don't have to do this. And then there's some blow-ups because, unfortunately, the brain 
is malfunctioning a bit because there's something that isn't supposed to be there. And so sometimes they're your friends, sometimes they're in a whole lot of pain, and sometimes they get a little bit aggressive. And um, Corinne keeps saying, I'm fine, don't worry, we're going to keep doing this cake stuff because they keep going out to bars, they do karaoke. Uh, some people do karaoke really bad. Both uh, sets of parents meets for, meet for dinner. Um, her uh, Jane's parents find out that she doesn't really want to go to law school because it's not what she's passionate about. And while they're disappointed because they both thought that's what she wanted to do, they're not against her or anything. Ad Adina Porter, I wish she had been featured a little bit more in this because she's fucking terrific. Um, the actor that plays uh, that plays um, her that plays the father, Isaac, uh, Jane's father. I believe he was in Kandahar. He's been in other stuff. He's been in stuff much better than Kandahar. Like this, by the way. And, you know, and then just the cake business um, kind of gets put on hold because she's taking care of her more. But Corinne insists, you know, push through. Keep doing this or whatever. Let's let's make this something memorable and everything. Because your cake's really good. You got you got this. And, yeah, the cancer's uncurable. And <laughs> she's in, out of hospital, stays, and then... There's this, there's this scene between them where huh, um, Corinne's basically on her deathbed and Jane's telling her all this stuff, don't worry, I'll keep doing this, I love you, all this. Sorry. She keeps, she, you know, she, Corinne passes away. Jane's obviously heartbroken. They have a dinner to honor her wake. Ben Midler shows up. During uh, during the stuff before she really, really got sick, they were doing a fundraiser. And then the cake business takes off, and her name's on it. Corinne's name. They did it. <laughs> the, <laughs> the thing on her tombstone was, lived for the music, stayed for the cake. Yeah, good personal stuff. A gets an A. Fuck it, A plus. Why not? A plus for good performances and making me sad. Uh, yeah, fuck cancer. At the end of the day, stay um stay in contact with your family, folks. Just just do it because they'd stay there for you. Don't let somebody suffer alone. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm Joe Rithlin, I'll see you soon.